Yeah. Minutes yeah. of fame are for Anna Ventura. Please come up on stage. Your microphone. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So, hello everyone. My name is Anna Ventura. Our startup is Team Out Loud. Team Out Loud is an enterprise social app that improves employee engagement through a recognition system. So what we did was we put together some social features like notification posts um, with a recognition system where any employee in a, in a company can recognize another employee. Mm -hmm. uh, we are focused on the hotel industry because employee engagement is very, it, it is very important in, the, in this industry. When employees are engaged, the productivity improves, uh, the retention improves, and customer ratings too. Um, we, are, we launched our product four weeks ago. We have uh, two, client, two clients using and two clients that we had sell but aren't using yet. Um, we have three co-founders. I'm business processor, I'm the CEO. Pedro is our CTO, he has a background in technology. And we have uh, uh, the third one, João, is a HR expert, he's a HR manager uh, in the hotel industry. Um, so you have two paying customers and two testing? So I just was... No, no, no. We have four, four. four clients. Yep. Two are already using, and the other two are, we are preparing the data for them to use. Are you charging them? Yeah, yeah. How much are course. you charging them? One euro per employee per month. Okay. One, okay. What's the rough MRR right now that you're doing? What's the? Um, MRR, monthly recurring revenue, or do you have that yet? Just no, curious. we don't have that okay. yet. All right, sure. <laughs> Questions? Um, how many, how many uh, employees do your customers have? Well, the biggest one... Typically, um, The biggest one uh, has 280 employees. It's Green Tea Hotel in Lisbon. But we, we sold the uh, license for all the hotels in the Green Tier chain. There are 5,500 uh, 5, uh, employees. Mm -hmm. They have uh, 11 hotels all over Europe, London, Prague, Budapest. So if you drill this client, this client uh, basically pays how much per month? Uh, well, for uh, they should pay one euro per employee per month, but we have a, a, a contract with them that is different because he's our better client, and so we have a, a discount with them. Um, basically, what I'm trying to get is get a sense of how much you know do you get per client per month, and uh, you know basically how, how long it's does it take early. you? It's too uh, early because our clients, besides Corinthia, are very small. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one has uh, 35. Uh, employees, the other 42, and the other 18. What, what, what would they do otherwise? So this is an employee recognition and a sort of engagement tool. What, what, what does your competition look like? What, you know, what would they be using if they weren't using your product? So there are several companies that, um, that have employee recognition systems. Uh, most of them are focused only in, in have features of recognition. Mm -hmm. We are a social and a recognition system. Uh, that's the, probably the, the, the way we differentiate it. And uh, the other way is because we work with the hotel industry since the beginning. We didn't did any line of code without um, learn and uh, um, talk to them. Okay. Um, so what's your biggest challenge or problem? What would you like to, what would you like to talk about during the next 10 minutes? <laughs> It seems that, it seems that uh, everything is going all right, <laughs> but it isn't. We don't have much money. Uh, we invest all we had uh, until now. So our biggest challenge right now is to balance between the, the time we spend in getting investment, new clients, and the, the clients we already have. We have to balance this, and this is our biggest challenge right now. Do you have thoughts? I, can. I, I have one thought. I mean, basically, I, th I think I understand the problem you're solving is, you know, staff churns and you have to recruit new people all the time, which is a pain for the hotel manager. Is that, is that correct? So this is really the issue that you're trying to solve. Um, and my, I can give you if an, I have... an example. In London, Green London, have more than 50 
50% of rotation every year. It's so huge. That's it's huge. huge. If we could, um, if, if, if one employee didn't go because they use our app, they pay the solution. That's awesome. I mean, and this is basically what I was going to get at is um, it, it would be what I'd love to hear from you is uh, how much value are you bringing to those clients, how, how your uh, solution helps um, uh, hotels reduce churn, um, how cost, uh, uh, employees use your, your tool and how well they are feeling rewarded and so on, uh, being like valuating the, um, the benefits of your solution, which, which is sort of... Um, still a little bit blur because you're in this test phase right now. Yeah. Because we, 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 don't, we just you have just watched it very recently. Yeah. 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 We don't have time. Okay. Already time how, for that. How, long do you how long do you think it's going to take, sorry to cut you off, how long do you think it's going to take um, to sort of know uh, how these results are going to be? Is it, you think it's a year? Is it going to be three months? Do you think it's going to be half a year? Between what do you think? six months and one year. Six yes. months. The hotel industry, normally they do uh, surveys annual service for employee engagement. Mm -hmm. So what we think is from one year to until another year, they will see results from employee engagement service. Okay. So, so the question that you had is, how do you balance your time between customers, taking care of your customers, fundraising? Have you raised any money yet or, or nope. everything's your bootstrap right now? Just, okay. just. Um, and then, and also just product development and other stuff, right? How many people on your team right now? We are only the three co-founders, okay. and we have a development team that is outsourced. Okay. So, thoughts? What's the ideal customer size for you? Uh, it has to have uh, 100 employees. But you'd rather have customers with 100 employees than 1,000 or 10,000? No, 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 no. It has to have at least 100 okay, employees. Okay, but what's the ideal for you? Oh, the ideal. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> because the best. So the, the the reason I'm asking is because if you sell to like Hilton hotels, right, or you sell to a tiny boutique hotel in Lisbon or London that may have 100 employees, right, it's a totally different sales, sales cycle, cycle yeah. product, sales <coughs> salesperson, you know, sales process. The whole thing could be very very different. In integration, you know, one guy might have no integration. The big one might need all kinds of integration, all kinds of systems. So one of the you know, what I sort of tend to advise companies like you, you're sort of a SaaS, your classic, you know, vertical industry SaaS play, right? Um, and one of the key decisions you need to make is to decide what your ideal customer looks like and then, you know, what that revenue looks like and then everything that flows from that, right? Because if you decide I'm going to target people with, with 100 to 1,000 employees or I'm going to target people with 1,000 to 10,000 or 10,000 to 50,000, it's a completely different... Yep company and different employees and different everything. So, so once you make that decision and then decide how, how narrow you want that band to be, right, I think a lot of other decisions will appear. Yeah. Shouldn't be a mix of everything because probably the cycle of, uh, of the sales will be longer if the... the so, so, so the question, I mean, I, I totally agree with Gil. I, you just hear us out, right? So what, what we're suggesting is I think you need to be very, very thoughtful about the, the sort of customer segment that you're going after. And so this is a trade-off, right? So um, if you go after like the whatever, the Hiltons, uh, Marriott's of 10,000, 50,000, it's going to be a longer sales cycle, but you'll be able to get like much wider sort of like, you know, more money, wider sort of penetration, or be thoughtful about like, you know what, like I'm just going to go after like hotels that have like 1,000 and then like go home that because it's going to be a shorter cycle, but you get the cash flow faster. But I think, I don't think you can do like right. both, at least not at this stage. And this is actually one of the things I see with, you know, I've done over 200 investments and this is what I see that actually kills B2B companies when they try to do too many sort of like, I go, what's your ideal customer segment? They're like, well, it's this one and this one, this one. I'm like, no, no, ideal customer segment, not segments because you diversify. Right. It's just, you're not in a stage where like you could do that when you have 100 people on your team and you raise like $20 million, right? But just you are not at that stage. And so you have to be hyper, hyper focused just on one initial segment, whatever that is. Maybe it's 50 people. It doesn't really matter. That sales cycle right. should be very, very quick and you have cash flows. I don't know what the answer is, right? But you have to be very, very thoughtful about this because that lack of focus will kill this company. And should we try it or we 
well, do some... Let me ask you, right? Let's assume for a second you can't raise any money, okay? Yeah. And you want to survive. So if you have three people, you're going to pay yourself X, right? And you need to have, if your customers are averaging 100 employees or 50 employees, or let's take your you know, 100, you know, how many customers do you need to close so that you guys can survive as a company versus if you had one customer with you know, 20,000 employees and there's the potential that they would deploy it, right? So as Marvin said, there's trade-offs, right? One is you need maybe 50 or 100 customers paying you to be able to survive and profit and you know, lead a good life. In the other case, it's going to take you maybe 18 months. You're going to need to hire some more developers. You're going to have to build some more product. You need to hire a guy with a suit and tie who can go and sell this thing. But event and you need to provide support and all these other things. But eventually, one customer can pay for the entire operation, yeah. right? Either way, you survive. But it's a completely different lifestyle. It's a completely yep. different business, right? And so uh, that's not really for us to say. We don't yeah, know. That's that's, that's yeah. different competitors. Yeah. Like a whole, the whole universe is different depending on which of those two roads you go down. And there's a control of the roadmap, basically. I think if you go and talk to a very big cost customers like Accor, they will ask you the world, uh, yeah. and it may take you six to twelve months to eighteen months to do something, and you may never get something done in the end. Yeah. If you if you focus on small customers, you may get. Feedbacks for this customer segment, and as Marvin said, they may have some expectations which are different to Accor. And Accor may actually ask you for uh, a white labeling solution, and you, you insert into there, so, which you may not want to do. But I'm just saying, if you focus on, on the first segment, you will learn a lot of things very quickly, and you will be able to adjust your product potentially quicker, sell quicker, um, and, and get some revenues in, which always feels good, uh, yeah. by the way. And, and that's potentially a foundation um, to convince uh, uh, investors. It's, it's also part of what you like to do. Yep. Uh, if you like to talk to big corporates, if you have this big corporate muscle in you, uh, and you feel you're very good in the corridor um, to convince people right before you, you, go, you go down the elevator, and I'm exaggerating because it doesn't go that way, but it's just a different, uh, it requires different uh, uh, sales skills. Um, talking to small, small uh, customers and big corporates. Yeah. But, but at the same time, once you've identified it, very, very easy to basically pull a list and then you just work your LinkedIn network or just scrape emails. Mm -hmm. you know, there's ways of actually getting to them, but it's really important to be thoughtful about that initial sort of like focus first because you just, the shotgun approach just does not work in the early stage. And so really think about this, right? And, and people go, well, what if I pick the wrong one? And my argument is just like that deep focus allows you to figure out whether that's the right thing or not. Because if you're really, really focused on it, you're like, wow, this is actually not the right route. You're going to find out much faster. And then you can switch, right? Versus trying to do two or three different segments like half-assed, which I see very, very frequently. Even my companies, it infuriates me. Um, but like that's, that's usually the main reason they die and run out of money. And actually going one step, is there anyone in your team that's sort of a, a growth marketer in, you know, in, in his mind or has the skills and that you know, loves it and, and is doing this for you now? Anyone who does growth marketing? No, so you have typically traditional, I pick up the phone and I, say, I try to book a meeting, watch a Skype call yeah. with someone. Okay. So you're just using your network to basically yeah, go and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Um, keep on doing that, right? But just figure out that segment first. So we have 46 seconds. Do you have any other questions? <laughs> just in time. Okay. Thank you all, all right. for, for your all right. advice. All right, great. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. All right. Just so it's the end of the live mentoring. I'm sorry, I, I would ask you some questions, <laughs> but maybe we'll do it outside. No.